Yes, I can. Every day, a child is born in Nigeria. After birth, all children are expected to be immunized against some preventable childhood diseases such as polio. Yeah, polio is a viral disease and uh, it's what we call uh, fecal aura that is transmitted from the feces to the mother, so it's called fecal aura and then causes a paralytic disease called poliomyelitis. That was Dr. Ahmed Abdulouab. He is the deputy program manager for the PRIN MNCH program. PRIN is Partnership for Reviving Routine Immunization in Northern Nigeria. In 1988, the World Health Organization intensified efforts to completely eradicate polio in the world. And since then, polio cases have decreased by over 99%. There are only three countries in the world where polio still exists. Nigeria is one of them. The other two are Afghanistan and Pakistan. Dr. Ahmed Abdulouab says polio should not exist in Nigeria as it is preventable. Polio is one of the vaccine preventable diseases and we have a vaccine it's called the oral polio vaccine. According to the organization PATH, in northern Nigeria, barely one in ten children receives all of their routine vaccines. One of such is the polio vaccine. Four doses of the live oral polio vaccine are needed. Unfortunately, too few children in northern Nigeria receive even a single dose of the vaccine. The World Health Organization, WHO, says polio is not treatable. The polio vaccine is the only way to prevent a child from being affected by polio, which mainly affects children under five years of age. In Nigeria, despite intensive efforts to eradicate it in the country, polio persists. Dr. Ahmed Abdulouab explains why. You know we have been having this what we call polio campaigns, but uh, round after round we have some group of children that don't get immunized, what you call missed children. So because of those challenges that we have, those missed children, so we have a population, a group of children that are not immunized. He explains the implication of missing some children during polio vaccination. We have what we call non-compliance. You have some parents, for various reasons, hiding their children or refusing to bring their children out to get immunized. As long as we continue to have those people that don't believe in, in polio vaccination, then you will continue to have this problem. Dr. Ben Ayene is the Chairman Health Reform Foundation of Nigeria. He says there are other reasons why polio persists in Nigeria. The primary health care and the centers are not just there. If the primary health care system is working, the vaccines are available when they are needed. And of course, the issue of uh, doing community engagement and sensitization and mobilization and disabusing people's mind. People can go to health centers and assess all these vaccines, not just polio, other uh, routine immunization. Others include rumors on the safety of polio vaccine. In July 2003, for instance, the polio immunization campaign was discontinued in some states in northern Nigeria because some religious and political leaders alleged the vaccines were deliberately contaminated with anti-fertility agents and the HIV virus. In 2004, vaccinations resumed after tests showed the vaccine was not contaminated with estrogen, anti-fertility agents or HIV. Insecurity in some states in northern Nigeria has also been blamed. In 2013, nine polio vaccinators in Kano were killed by gunmen and their clinic set on fire as they vaccinated children against the polio virus. Poor skills of some vaccinators and poor storage of vaccines have also been mentioned as reasons. So that when I'm a small baby about getting to one, one year or one year and a half during the polio time. When the polio people came to us, they went to my mommy as they want to do me polio injections. So when they are doing injections, the injection is not successful. The person that gives the injection to me, he's not a professional. So he's getting mistake of the injections. Since from there then, I have this uh, little challenge. Mohamed Adamu is in his 30s. He is from Yobe State, Nigeria. The effect of polio infection has left him with the inability to use both of his legs. He says although he grew up to see himself without legs, he still faces some challenges. The thing affected me, I cannot be able to work. All my nerves is getting weak. He says he had to devise a means to survive. 
Thank God I now can be able to move from one place to another, whether with my bicycle or I can, you know, graph down to move around. Managing my charging, downloading music and other activities. His bicycle is a locally made wheelchair and skateboard. Mohammed does not beg on the streets. However, he wants polio eradicated so that beggars will get off the streets. That people that are doing polio, they are visit a hospital. People that are running around to seek people who are not well, to give them medicine so that they will be not begging on the streets. If polio eradication fails, much of the money spent will have been wasted. And if it succeeds, the world will be polio free. Dr. Ben says to eradicate polio in Nigeria, the primary health care systems in the local government areas should be functional and polio eradication should stem from the local government areas and not federal. Immunization is being driven at federal level. It shouldn't actually be federal level thing. It should be a state local government thing. But because they are abdicating those responsibilities, that's why you see a lot of emphasis coming from federal level and all those things. Federal level doesn't have HR, human resources, and the capacity to actually do things at get keepers level. He also advocates for a schedule of immunization to help eradicate polio in Nigeria. If actually the routine immunization is properly strengthened and given where it's supposed to be given, which is at primary health centers, and people assess it, you possibly don't even need to go visiting people, uh, wasting all the energy and resources. Dr. Ahmed Abdulouab of Spring MNCH agrees. Government is also working to strengthen the routine immunization, which is practically the most important arm of the polio eradication initiative. That routine immunization is a scheme so that uh, every child is given certain vaccines to prevent them against what we call vaccine-preventable diseases. He says threatening the regular schedule of immunization will yield positive results. The polio campaign, what we call the Polio Eradication Initiative, has actually four components. The first important component is the routine immunization. Then you have the campaign, then you have the surveillance, and then we have what we call small pop campaigns. We want to get the routine immunization strengthened. So if we have the routine immunization strengthened, then that arm of the Polio Eradication Initiative has been taken care of. Efforts by parents, government, and health workers need to be intensified to eradicate polio in Nigeria and make Nigeria one more country that is polio-free. According to the World Health Organization, for as long as a single child remains infected, children in all countries are at risk of contracting polio. Failure to eradicate polio from Afghanistan, Pakistan and Nigeria could result in as many as 200,000 new cases every year within 10 years all over the world. This ends our report.